8.1 deals with comparing and interpreting rates. Well, what's a rate? A rate is a comparison of two amounts that are measured in different units. An example would be 250 words in five minutes. That is a rate. So let's explore a little bit. World class sprinters can run 100 meters in about 9.8 seconds. If they could run at this rate for a longer period of time, estimate how far they could run in a minute, in an hour, and in a day. So if you want, pause the video and see if you can do this question. So here's how I would solve it. So my key piece of information is that they can run 100 meters in about 9.8 seconds. That's going to be my rate. Next, I found my unit rate. My unit rate is how far they could run in one second. The actual definition of a unit rate is a rate in which the numerical term of the second term is one. So one second. So how I did this was I took 100 meters, I divided it by 9.8 seconds, and I got 10.204 meters per second. Now to find how far they could run in a minute, I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. So if I have 60 seconds over one minute times 10.204 meters per second, I end up with 612.244 meters per minute. I did something very similar to calculate the unit rate in hours, which is how far they could run in one hour. So if I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour, and then they travel 612.244 meters per minute, then if you look, my units will cancel, minutes will cancel, leaving me with 36,734.693 meters per hour. We can then convert that to 36.734 kilometers per hour. Why? Because there are a thousand meters in a kilometer. So now to find how far they traveled in a day, I took my there's 24 hours in a day, I know that, and I multiplied that by my 36,734.693 meters per hour, here they rounded, which is fine, which works out to um, 881,632.653 meters per day, or 881 kilometers per day. So there were just a couple of definitions we need to know. A rate is a comparison of two amounts that are measured in different units. So example, 250 words in five minutes is a rate. A unit rate is a rate in which the numerical term of the second term, or this one, the minutes, is one. So an example of this would be change 250 words in five minutes to a unit rate. See if you can do that. So to do this, you take 250 and divide it by 5, which works out to 50 words in one minute. Okay, so now let's actually use the math. So example one, comparing two rates expressed in different units. I'm going to show you guys a couple different ways to approach this style of question. So let's read the question. Natasha can buy a 12 kilogram turkey from her local butcher for $42.89. The local supermarket has turkeys advertised in its weekly flyer for $1.49 per pound. There are about 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. Which store has the lower price? If you notice, we can't directly compare these because they're measuring in different units. We have kilograms and pounds, so we'll need to convert one to the other. We're just comparing, so we can say that from the butcher, a 12 kilogram tur turkey costs about $43. So now to calculate the price from the supermarket for 12 kilograms of turkey, we need to say, okay, we have the price of our turkey as T. So we're going to take that it's about $1.50 per pound, multiply that, because we know that there's about 2 pounds in 1 kilogram, and we know that we want 12 kilograms, so we're going to multiply by 12 kilograms. Once we do this, if you notice, our units all cancel out, so that's a really good check. If you want to end up with money, if you want to end up with a dollar sign, make sure that dollars doesn't cancel out. So our pounds cancel, our kilograms cancel, which gives us that the price of a turkey from the superstore, or from the supermarket, is about $36. So that's much less than from the butcher. 
So now we're going to do the exact same problem, but we're going to look at it in a different way. So we're going to compare the two using unit rates. We're going to find the price per kilogram from both the supermarket and from the butcher. So let's look at the butcher first. So the price per kilogram from for a turkey from the butcher, B. We can easily find that because our units are kilograms. So we have butcher, B, is equal to $42.89 divided by 12 kilograms, which works out to $3.57 per kilogram. So now let's look at the supermarket's price. So we know the price per pound for the supermarket. It's $1.49 per pound. But we need to convert convert that to kilograms. So we multiply 149 per pound times 2.2 pounds in one kilogram. Our pounds will cancel off, LB will cancel, which works out to, when you multiply $1.49 times 2.2, we get $3.28 per kilogram, which is much, much cheaper than from the butcher. So now we're going to be connecting the slope of a line segment to a rate. So we're going to be describing a scenario that can be represented by this graph over here. We need to compare the rates shown and discuss why the rates may have changed. So if you remember, or if you're taking physics right now, the rate of change in a graph is actually the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x. also known as the change in our vertical axis over the change in our horizontal axis. So slope can be written in these three ways. Pick one and stick with it. So slope is equal to delta y over delta x. This is the Greek letter delta. And all that means is change. So slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. You can also write it as slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or, you can write it as the change in distance over the change in time is equal to d2 minus d1 over t2 minus t1. So in order to do this, I need to find the coordinate points of both my endpoints of my line, of my line segments, of each line segment. So let's start off with the first line segment, which is this one. So the first line segment has, has endpoints 0, 0 and 30, 2. The second line segment is horizontal, which means that the slope will be zero because there's no change in my y. So my favorite formula to use is slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to use that. So slope one is equal to y2, which is two, minus y1, which is zero, over x2, which is 30 minus x1, which is 0. So slope 1 is equal to 2 kilometers over 30 minutes. So because comparing kilometers to minutes is a little bit awkward for me, my brain doesn't work like that, I'm going to convert to kilometers per hour. So I have 2 kilometers over 30 minutes times 60 minutes in 1 hour, our minutes will cancel, and we get 4 kilometers per hour for the first line segment. And as I said, the second line segment is zero kilometers per hour because we have no change in y over some change in x. So zero divided by anything is zero. So now let's look at the third and final line segments. So the third line segment has endpoints 40, 2, and 60, comma, 5. The fourth line segment has endpoints 60, comma, 5, and 65 comma 0. So now using my slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I get that the slope of my third line segment is 3 kilometers over 20 minutes. And doing the same for my fourth line segment, I have 0 minus 5 over 65 minus 60, which works out to negative 1 kilometer per minute. Now let's convert these to kilometers per hour, and we have that 3 kilometers over 20 minutes times 60 minutes in 1 hour, our minutes will cancel, is equal to 9 kilometers an hour, so here we're going 9 kilometers per hour, and the fourth line segment 
we have negative one kilometer in one minute times 60 minutes in an hour is negative 60 kilometers per hour. So we can't actually travel like a negative kilometers per hour unless we're moving backward. So what this means is that from this point to this point, we're actually going backwards in distance. Instead of getting further away from our origin, we're getting closer to it. So we're going a negative 60 kilometers per hour in that we're going 60 kilometers per hour back to our starting point. So now let's actually describe a scenario that is represented by this graph and let's figure out why the rates might have changed. Okay, so this graph could definitely represent someone, say, walking to a friend's house or walking to a variety store. Okay, so we have the, the first line segment represents a person walking at a rate of 4 kilometers per hour for 30 minutes to get from home to a variety store. Then we stop at the store for 10 minutes. We're not really going anywhere, we're just at the store. The third line segment could represent someone jogging because we're going faster, we're going at 9 kilometers an hour. So the person could be jogging for 20 minutes to say to get to a friend's house. Then our fourth and final line segment could be uh, the person traveling at 60 kilometers per hour back home but they caught a ride with their friend to go home. So they're in a car going 60 kilometers per hour. So the key idea for this section was that rates can be represented in a variety of ways and the representation representation you choose should depend on your purpose. So you can compare rates by writing them as rates with the same units, with second terms that are the same, or you can write them as unit rates, where the numerical values of the second terms are equal to 1. When comparing rates, it's helpful to round the values. When you're in real life in the grocery store trying to compare prices between two different brands, you're just going to be rounding. This is the most valuable thing in this section. So it enables you to do the mental math and express each rate as an approximate unit rate. In a graph that shows the relationships between two quantities, so like our traveling graph, the slope of the line segment represents the average rate of change for those quantities. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is equal to our slope. It's also equal to the rate of change. The slope of a line segment that represents a rate of change is a unit rate. Pretty cool stuff. stuff.